Welcome to the ACHA Certification Prep video series. My name is Tim Spence, and I will be joined by my colleagues, Greg Moon and Craig Pichetti. We are going to take you through 10 example questions for the ACHA exam, exam. And then you'll also hear from certificant Kyle Basilius, who recently passed the exam. Before we start, let's review a few tips for passing the exam. And if you haven't taken an exam lately, these are good to just go back through. So first, you want to make sure that you read the questions carefully. Answer only what the question is asking. In other words, don't read into the question. Compare your answers and determine the most probable. And you'll see these on the example questions that we go through, how we work down through the most probable answer. Utilize all the time available to you and don't rely solely on your experience. Hi, uh, I'm Greg Moon and I just want to uh, congratulate you all on uh, considering uh, uh, certification in the American College of Healthcare Architects. Um, and um, I'm glad that you uh, are joining us for this uh, question and answer period. These are sample questions that you'll be uh, we'll give you an ex example of what you will see on the, uh, on the test. And they're divided up into three major categories. They're recalling the information that you should know as a healthcare architect and as an architect in general. Uh, there'll be application. How do you apply your knowledge to the healthcare environment? And uh, analysis. This will be things uh, how you have to understand uh, and maybe possibly even calculate um, things to, um, to uh, resolve a problem, come up with a solution. So I'm going to start with the uh, question number one. When considering the design for information systems in any inpatient or outpatient healthcare project, the acronym EMR refers to the equipment management roster, electronic medical record, emergency medical response, elect electrical maintenance report. Now, as a healthcare uh, architect and designer, you should uh, be aware that um, what we're talking about in EMR is B, which is the electronic medical record. A sample exa uh, exam question number two. At the completion of a large project to provide inpatient beds, all the final project documents have been collected. The air balance for bone marrow transplant patient rooms is neutral with 12 air changes per hour. The architect should instruct the contractor to A, decrease the air changes, B, adjust for positive air balance, C, adjust for negative air balance, and D, increase air changes. So this is an application type question. Um, we have to understand the relationships between concepts. In this case, you would want to understand the type of uh, patient population you're dealing with in the environment. There's susceptibility to uh, infection and, um, and just a sensitivity level. And that, that environment would require uh, a positive air um, environment. So you would need to adjust for positive air balance. Yeah, that's a good one, Craig. Um, so the next question is, a replacement hospital is 50% through construction. The owner, owner notifies the architect that he or she wishes to change an endoscopy room to a treatment room. Which of the following is the most important consideration to be reviewed? Now, this is one of those most uh, questions, right? And it's probably one that you don't want to read too much into. So if you look down structural modifications, environmental requirements, radiation protection, room finishes, we know that there's not any information given on structural. So don't read into the question. And we know uh, that there's no um, discussion about what's actually taking place in that treatment room related to radiation. So we're down to environmental requirements and room finishes. 
environmental is is going to be the answer because we're going to need to check pressure requirements outdoor air change requirements and minimum total air change requirements Okay, um, sample question number four. Per the guidelines, and I know that you were exposed to information about that in uh, Tim's presentation, uh, his um, uh, earlier presentation, uh, but we, uh, guidelines are very important. They give us a lot of, uh, of information that we can design around. Per the guidelines, the negative air pressure is found in which of the following rooms? Now, this is gonna be, um, uh, our, our favorite type of question, it's a multiple choice question and it's got various answers to it. So what you have, what you should do is first look at the question, look at the answer, they give the four points, one, two, three, and four. So per uh, negative air pressure is found in which of the following rooms? Emergency triage, emergency waiting, the operating room or the patient toilet room. Again, this is uh, understanding more this just more than uh, just application, but this is also an analysis. You need to know what has to happen in that room to understand which, um, uh, what the uh, air pressure and air balance is for that space. So um, the question is, which of these rooms do not need negative air or do not require negative air? So if we look down the list, one, two, three, and four, um, operating rooms are a positive air environment. So you should know right away, you can eliminate everything, uh, the A, B, C, and D that have three in their answer. So that leaves us with a uh, number B, which is the emergency triage, emergency waiting, and patient toilet will have negative air pressure. Thank you, Greg. Um, sample exam question five, which of the following design criteria is least important to planning a pediatric critical care unit? Uh, and you're going to see most or least, and this is what you really want to repeat that. Least important. All of these items might actually be important. On some level, you want to prioritize their importance to determine which is the least. Again, this is where your experience can sometimes get in the way as well. If you overanalyze it, you could have done a unit that actually um, to the, the client, um, one of these might have been more, um, more important to them. But in the case of whether it's uh, it generally for this type of environment, a pediatric critical care unit, which is least important. So visibility of the patient, A. B, ability to accommodate patients' families. C, access to patient toilets, and B, uh, or D, ability to accommodate crisis interventions. So understanding pediatric environment, in this case, the least important is going to be your access to the patient toilets. Next question, question six, licensing standards require narcotics to be stored a, in a location with double locks, B, remote from public waiting areas, C, under direct supervision of the nurse manager, and D, in an alarm cabinet linked to security. These all look pretty good. And um, this is actually a new question for me. Uh, so if I were in the scenario of looking at this, taking a practice exam, I'd want to go and do a little bit more digging on this and I, I did look at FGI and it, it pushes you to the code of federal regulations which say A in a location with double locks is the answer. Um, again these are great opportunities to, to see where you need to look a little bit deeper into some material and I think this would be one for me. Sample uh, question number seven. Uh, in an, an existing two-story hospital is adding more patient beds. 
when preparing an analysis to determine whether to expand vertically or horizontally, which of the following should be done first? <clears throat> now, um, we have uh, the four uh, answers. Evaluate potential disruptions, which is, of course, going to be very uh, important, no matter whether you go horizontally uh, or vertically. Confirm the existing structural capacity. Determine existing requirements or analyze sharing of utility services. Now, some of these are, um, I think, can be eliminated fairly quickly. We're talking about a two-story hospital. They want to add more beds. Um, it's, uh, then they, and they want an analysis to expand vertically or uh, um, horizontally. But to expand vertically, you're going to have to confirm the existing structural capacity, number B. Uh, determining existing requirements. That's an analysis that you would do before you even started doing this. Um, analyzing sharing utility services is going to be something that is going to have to happen whether you go vertically or horizontally. And potential disruptions, there's going to be disruptions. So, um, but to go vertically, you will need to go and, and uh, go with B uh, to confirm uh, the existing structural capacity. Great. Sample uh, exam question A. Frozen section component of a lab is often located in close proximity to which of the following? A, blood bank, B, surgery, C, imaging, D, emergency. Uh, this is one of those application type questions where you're looking for finding relationships um, uh, specifically between areas and um, ones that require close proximity or, or um, some sort of connectivity due to the function. So in, in the case you want to understand that function and that um, tissue is removed um, during surgery, it needs to be taken to a, um, by a pathologist uh, and frozen in a cryostat machine. So um, you understand, if you understand that connection of, of function and the uh, necessity for a close proximity uh, that will lead you to uh, B, surgery, uh, uh, is where the frozen section component of the lab is often located in close proximity. We got a couple more questions here. Question nine. Kind of gave me an easy one, guys. What is the maximum allowable area for a smoke compartment in a hospital? This, Greg, you were talking earlier about um, the different type of questions, and this is a pure recall question. You either know it or you don't. The answer is C, 22,500 square feet per compartment maximum. Okay, sample question 10, though is going to apply to number nine. Um, yes, uh, Tim said this is an easy question, but it's not so easy if you missed it, mm -hmm. because this question is going to ask you to apply that the answer to nine to this uh, multiple choice question. If a new hospital project is being de designed at 30, 360,000 building gross square feet and contains five equal floors, what is the minimum number of smoke compartments the facility could have? Well, here's the trick. If you miss number nine, you're gonna miss number 10. So this, uh, the, uh, the application of um, knowing something that we all should understand, we should know as, uh, as architects, whether young architects or no, our, our old architects, the area of a smoke uh, compartment when we look at this and you simply have to do the math, then you take 360,000 building gross square feet, divide by five, and then divide those by the 22.5, and you're going to come up with um, 20 smoke zones. Actually, you're going to come up with 19 and a little extra, so you have to round up to 20. So we've uh, come to our conclusion here. Uh, we do have another uh, 10 questions. 
uh, that will be in the next segment. Um, if you need any um, resources, you can see them listed there in the bottom corner. Um, the phone number, the, um, the uh, website, the health uh, healtharchitects.org, and the LinkedIn page, all resources. Of course, the certification handbook is a valuable resource to guide you through all processes. So um, watch uh, all the videos uh, if you hadn't had a chance and um, feel free to obviously watch the next one. Um, you are now going to hear from um, one of our uh, recent certificates. Uh, gonna give you some advice on the exam. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kyle Basilius. I am a senior associate and senior healthcare planner at Parkin Architects Limited in Vancouver, Canada. I have been an ACHA certificate for about a year now, and I currently sit as the co-chair of the Continuing uh, Competency Committee, um, also known as the CCC. I would say the best thing about being ACHA is kind of that national and industry recognition of my commitment to healthcare design. Um, I've been working for about 18 years now solely in healthcare and it's my passion and I've always wanted to get my certificate certificate once I got licensed and now that I have it um, just a, it's a big sense of accomplishment. What advice would you give to someone who is preparing for the exam and how did I prepare? Um, I'd recommend going to the ACHA prep seminars and then following the syllabus they kind of tell you each category that um, you'll see on the test. Um, a lot of the things like reimbursement and other gov government subsidy programs, um, Medicare, Medicaid, um, Obamacare, um, those types of systems, you'll have to kind of uh, Google that and do your research online. Um, there isn't really um, any of the provided kind of healthcare resources that kind of tell you about that. Um, other things, you know, I looked at all the code books, uh, read those a couple times just to kind of ingrain them in my head. Um, and then there's, you know, we offer at the ACHA some, some group sessions um, in the summer that allow you to get on the phone and a, and a Zoom with other people studying for the exam. You kind of share thoughts about how you're studying. And that was super helpful as well. Um, I also would recommend maybe finding a medical um, dictionary. So one that kind of tells you different terms of different procedures. Um, that would be helpful, I think, for the test. And you know, using flashcards um, to write down measurements for ADA, for what you see in FGI, um, for your major spaces, um, that was a good way to study and memorize some of the basic um, rules of the code um, that you'll have to know for the test. What was your experience uh, taking the real exam? Uh, my experience taking the real exam was I thought it was pretty fast paced. So I would recommend, you know, marking the questions you're stumped on or don't know the answer right away and just come back to them at the end. You don't want to kind of get bogged down on some questions that you might not have seen in your study prep and then, you know, run out of time later on. So I think that's a good test taking um, suggestion that you should follow.